Hello. Hello. Good morning. Back on the roof today for me. Going to be doing several things. First job, but not in this particular order. We are going to be cutting the rafters off on the porch, left hand side. As you know, we left them long until the customer decided what he wanted to do with it. So we'll be doing that. And that will then give me off cuts to the ladder frame on the gable end, which we're also going to do on the truss roof because he now wants a barge board fascia. It's called a barge board. On the end of that now, instead of the um, traditional undercloak and compoing the tiles on. Well, I am actually going to be doing the cut roof as well between the trust roof and the porch. But because the I know that the footage will be a bit long, what um, what I'm going to do is do that in a in a separate episode. I think just because it'd be a bit too long that footage. So what I'm going to do finish the day off. Then I'll be cutting the ends off the trusses to above the front entrance to make sure they're all parallel with the brickwork. And then I'll be putting the eaves protectors on for him, for the customer, say for him, for Scott. And then putting the first strobe of felt on front and back and the first batten for him to uh, set his roof out for himself. And he can then felt and batten it while I'm not there then. Hope you enjoy this one. We'll get there and we'll get cracked on. Then what I'll do, get on two foot level. Down. And then you just transfer your marks then onto the top. Right, I'm lucky I can use my six foot level here, but if you haven't, you just use a string line. Or a chalk line, should I say, which is always the best way to do it. You could use a string line and mark them individually, but just find the chalk line a bit more accurate. I think you've got to be careful of then is if you use a chalk line that these some of these rafters aren't, aren't up and down because it would be a bit of a false reading. So just keep an eye on that. Transfer your lines and do exactly the same as I've just done. And I'll be rafting it. Okay. And the first one, I'm going to have to do that by hand. The rest of them. Yeah, I'll do it my, uh... if, you, if you didn't know, and I only found this out not so long ago, generally saws are inch and a half from there to the outside of your blade, generally. Now, this is Metabo, so it's German, so this doesn't look like inch and a half to me. This one, however, is an inch. Whether it differs in size or blade sizes, I don't know, but uh, yeah, this one's an inch. But I know my other two saws have got an inch and a half. Morning. Morning.
changed my mind. Bands are not being a bit of a mess. So. Do this instead. Just lazy. Years and years ago, I wouldn't have dreamed of using power tools. It was all hand nails and no power tools, but there we go. Easier, more efficient, not cleaner. Right, that's job done. On to the next. So you could do this a couple of ways, depending on what, uh, what timber you've got, but nowadays, if you don't need to waste timber, then we don't because the cost of it. You would actually make up normally a ladder, which is why it's called a ladder frame. You put a piece of timber, pieces of timber, put it, another timber on the end, and then screw the whole thing to that. But because it's truss, and they're lightweight anyway, what I don't want to do is put any undue weight on the end of that truss. Even though it holds it, of course it will, and then it'll be supported by this brickwork when it gets cut up anyway. For that reason, all I'm going to do is mark on my centres, about 600 mil apart, 600 centres, and I'm going to fix a timber, screwed and nailed into the end of that, 4x2 sticking out flush with this brickwork. I'll put a double at the top, so one this pitch and one that pitch to join those two together. I'll screw them together and I'll run the ladder frame down there. But that's what I'm going to do now. Just put bits across here, across this way. All right, so all I'm going to do then is measure from my truss to my brickwork and iron that through. I am about 385. But what I will do is put that level on there. So a bit work, get myself a bit level, about there, yeah, 385. And I just spoke to the customer and what we've, uh, what we've agreed is we're going to put these noggins on, if you want to call them that, or the ladder frame timbers. We're just going to come over a little bit. So we're going to get to 420, because what we want to do in effect is if you imagine that's the end of your, the timber I'm going to put on, that's going to stick out here. When we put the capping board on, what we don't want to do, say if that's if that's the brickwork coming up there now, I'm looking. What I'm doing is I'm looking at it like this. That's the brickwork coming up there now, like that. So it comes through, and this noggin is sticking out the brickwork here, sticking out. So what I want to do when I put the capping board on, so if that's that's there, that was my brickwork, and this is the noggin I'm going to put on now, sticking out of this side, this gable. When we put the, the face on, we want to come down like that, and then the hockey stick of the face, we want to do that with it, so it returns into the brickwork, and then the round part of the fascia sits against the brickwork like that. So that dimension does change, not really, but what I don't want to do is, is get, a, get a measurement, which it is, 18 mil, 15 mil, whatever it might be, different manufacturers, and then set this to that dimension to then make it work, because if the brickwork creeps a little bit, or you know anything could happen what i don't want to do is end up with this great one end and at the top it, it's sort of sitting at that point and i've got to go back and cut all this down so i might as well allow these long we can get exact measurement once the brickwork's done i can pull a string line top to bottom and then cut these off to that internal dimension of the, of the hockey stick so that's your fascia like that that dimension there i want the, that to sit against the brickwork so that dimension i'm not going to guess it i'm going to overhang it 30 mil without wasting too much timber. And then when we get that on site, we'll get that on site. Let's say it's 15 mil. I'll then 15 mil at the bottom, 15 mil at the top, pull a string line and cut all these off at 15 mil. That's what I'm gonna do. Right, all those are on now. It's a bit of a twist on this truss. You can just about see it there where the truss has gone over. So all we'll do is we'll just, because it's screwed and nailed, we can push that up and then build it in, build underneath it and pull the truss out, uh, pull the twist out. Plus the fact when I put the uh, face on it, I can pull it over anyway. I may even look at when I put the batten on, the uh, lath, sorry, I can pull it over them anyway. But they're all on, all the way down. As I said, they are longer. Um, so we'll cut those off when the brickwork goes in. What we're doing now is I'm going to cut these off to the same level 
the minimum I've got, I think, is 255, which is that one. So I measure 255 off there, 255 off here. This is to the brickwork, to the face, to the uh, the plum cut. And then I cut them off the same. And then what I'm going to do is that allows me then to measure, um, start setting out the, the lath and felt, um, which I'm going to go and fetch the, the lath in a minute and, uh, and start that for him because I've got a couple of hours left to go yet, so I'll go and sort that out. Right, 255, and that is plum. I've checked that. So, 255. Uh, what am I doing? 255. So, if I level that up, like that. Put your pencil on the line there like that to get if you're doing it in this instance you've only got two pairs of hands <laughs> or you need two pairs of hands or so like that okay you speed square okay so I do love this pouch but it's a pain in the arse to get my string line out Okay, so if I pull from there now, and I know that I want it on the, on the face of there, this is what I was saying about making sure you, when you pull your string line, you don't. Uh, this is a bit higher, so if I just hold it in line there, but a, a bit above the top. It doesn't fail on this then, so it'll give me a true line. So if I pull this now, there we go. And when you when you're doing on a pitch, try and pull 90 degrees to the pitch. If you pull there, it could, it, t it tends to bounce. So try and keep it to the same pitch when you pull your string line. But that now, as big as it is, a bit of a big string line there, really, but a bit thick. In fact, what I might do is. Because uh, that is a bit too thick for me. I think this line's on its way out, I think, and it's a, a new chalk line, I think. Or a new line for my chalk line, should I say. Okay, it looks like it's the, the top of that one. So there. This isn't the normal way to use a chalk line, but there you go. So it's the bottom of that one. And that one is there. So I said about the chalk line bouncing. It's actually there, so there we go. Level those lines down now. And I can cut them off. Oh, I'm a bit off there, didn't I? I didn't. There we go. I thought I did, but I didn't. Okay, so we want. There, okay, that line's way too thick. <sighs> I cut it this side, I can use my circular. Right, they're all cut, so cut these off now. Sorry, Scott, I'm gonna put dust on your new van. I'll blow it off in a minute, I promise. Uh, tell you what I'll do, I'll use my little saw, that'd be much easier. Plus, the motor's the other side, so it makes it easier. If you didn't see it earlier, because I would have deleted it, my uh, GoPro fell off the roof onto the floor. It's not broke it, luckily, but that's why I didn't film all the time lapse for the putting the knockings on. So I couldn't bother to set it back up again. So there you go. That's what happened. Right. 
lovely. All cut off. So, you know what I'll go and do? Or what I'll do now, sorry, is having any protector on here with like a plastic and it comes down and goes over the top. So I know we're using jumbo board. So that's going to be 16 mil. Normally anyway. So um, 16, 16 mil and then 50 mil to centre gutter. So 66 mil. I'll check what size he's felt. I think it's a rod of a metre. Then what I'll do is I shall measure up the roof like that to 935, 65mm, 66mm, there we go, 935. And then mark that there like that. And that is a top of my metre felt because a metre comes over and allows you enough a metre felt then to go into the gutter underneath the eaves protector. So to the side this end. 9.35 and because I've just cut these off to a line I'm happy enough now to just uh, mark these straight off the rafter again if it was a big roof I'll be chalking this on chalking this line on and then follow it I do chalk every four or five lath lines anyway. I get this set, chalk the first one on. There we go. That's my first row of felt. I will put a raw felt down there first, onto the valley, like that. And then that's where the, uh, the valley will sit on that then. So, um, I haven't asked him if he wanted me to put valley boards in, which is like a flush we're here to carry the the fiberglass tray but because it's only a porch you might not want it on so I'll have to speak to him. We can put those in no problem so we can just attach the felt to this end and then we can lap it back no problem. Okay right I'll go and fetch some gear. Right I'm back so we're going to put these eaves protectors on first so I'll just try and get a rough that should sort of sit on that lip there on the other side of this one against the top of this it should then give me my lap right so it doesn't so what I need to do thank you cup of tea uh, right end of there what I need to do is get my 66 mil which is 16 mil jumbo board and then 50 mil into the gutter which is about there so if I get Mark pencil on there. That is a hundred and hundred and fifteen. I'm going to staple all these on for now just so we can mess if we need to mess with them we can without causing too much grief now these are pretty straight so I can pretty much go to the same line but and then what happens then is there'll be a bath on there anyway to there and lap it to there that should be plenty lap it over to there so I'll cut that off there right I'll put everything away now because I've just been out 
so I'll make a bit of a workbench. There's my mark there. Knife. Easy with a saw, but I'm trying to get a bit done before I have to disappear. All I'm doing now is just getting a lath on the bottom just to stop the felt moving just in case and I'll just tack it on and leave the uh, pin sticking out. And also it aids us then to get up and down the ladder as well. Because until the uh, the valley's in there, we can't do this anyway. Because this all the valley's got to go on first. But if I try and find the end of my uh, end of my laths, and I'll just in fact I'll just pin it to that line because I'm not too bad on that line anyway. Pin it to there for now. Stop the felt lifting up. don't mind using lath now so I think it's uh, quite nice to get the hammer out occasionally don't mind it at all right last one You put one on your lap on your join um, but that's where the felt's got to go now so I know that um, Scott wanted me to set out the first lot of felt so we could carry on so uh, and then when he gets his his tile all I'll have to do then is he gets the under soil from the the, the um, nib the lug whichever you want to call it on the underside of the tile that clips onto the top of the tile like that you measure from that down and make sure that the end of the tile sits about the same point as that and that's where your first lath goes in and then you can measure from there to your top lath which you put on about 30 mil so down from the top measure down get this one and this that one parallel and in the uh, the book that you get or from wherever you get your manufacturer you can get on it online now you can get a tile gauge for whatever pitch roof you've got 18 degrees this one is i think so whatever tile is using it'll say there between x amount and x amount of spacings between your lath so that's what he'll do next but what i will do is because i'm only going to set this for him i'll put that on there get a rough a rough line Okay, if I take about a meter off that, and then that can go on the join then. Right, if I put that there then, what he'll do now is he can set that. Use his uh, 150 mil over that there now. I do believe he's trying to rain. Typical. If I set that on there, he can put his lap there and then just move it up. 
in fact I'll tell you what what I will do is actually I'll put it on there 100 mil line so we can cover the holes up if he changes the site the place of the lath blowing off. Right, and then once we to set the rear one now, so let's go try and find out how to do that without taking all the plastic off. Right, let's go around the back. Okay, so here we have it for the day. This is the probably the last day I come here now, or we'll do any filming here, should I say. I might come back and help Scott with the uh, covering the scene. But um, yeah, that's probably me now. I'll leave him to this. So this is all, all remain covered. And then he'll carry on up the roof now with his lath, gauge it all down. That can all be felted. So yeah, that's all done up there. Put the first line of felt up there, ready. And he can carry on off the dotted lines and then work his way up to the, up to the ridge. And then uh, work out his gauge and put all his laths on. So this can be watertight now. I think the brick is coming back this weekend coming, which is the second bank holiday or May Day bank holiday as they call it, I think. It's come back and they'll brick all this in. So that'll be good to see next time I come. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button. I hope you've enjoyed these videos. I've been very pleased with the amount I've had response I've had from the last video and well, had this whole series really. I've been really, really happy about that. Thank you ever so much for everyone for the comments. They've been fantastic, thank you. Um, but I'll leave this now in the couple of hands of Scott. To finish off just uh, if you have not subscribed please subscribe to the channel we've got a lot of content and content should i say on there now we've got a lot going on a lot coming up loft conversions large extensions so yeah thank you very much again